Yo, 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 yo. What's going on, man? Today is March the 24th, 2024. Happy Sunday. This is the Crispy Cap and NBA show. We're live on Twitter as always. We're live on YouTube as well as always. Um, link to all my official plays are in the description if you guys want to join and become members. And we had quite a few people do that yesterday. So shout out to the new members of the community. Um, hopefully we can kind of keep it going. Been a little bit hot. We've been on a heater, man. I don't know. I can't. I, I can go back and look at it, but I don't know how many plays we've given out this week, but I know I think we've only lost two, like like two plays. So something like t maybe 10 and two, something like that. I'll check it out. Um, but I, I honestly, I was just trying to concentrate on the six games that we had today. I didn't give out any more plays yesterday after the live show outside of the Brooklyn Nets team total under at halftime, which was a winner. Um, we saw a lot of blowouts yesterday and the weekends can be volatile, man. So that's one one reason why I typically um, – I don't I don't go too heavy on the weekends and I don't give out too many plays. The expectations got to lighten a little bit on the weekend, but we got a six game card on the board for today. So we're going to jump into it real quick. Yesterday, I didn't do, um, you know, I didn't have a presentation, but three and all day on Thursday. I'm sorry, on Friday, um, we had the Toronto team total under Boston first half, New Orleans and Miami under. And uh, yesterday it was just Brooklyn, their team total under live and their Brooklyn and then their team total live at halftime as well. So five and zero over the last two days, uh, which pushes us back up over first time on the season. So round of applause for that. We're finally up 40, uh, 40 and a half units on the season. And like I said, we're looking to, you know, double that. We're trying to get to at least 60 uh, on the season. And this is the best time of the year to, to bet basketball, in my opinion. And we got meaningful basketball with playoff implications. And we got, you know, some of those real tough situations. We really find out who these teams are. So let's jump into it for today. Uh, hit the like button for me if you can if you as you join the show, uh, especially if you find it helpful, productive towards your handicap. Let's jump into it for today, man. So first game up, and I'm going to go through the comments too. Uh, first game up, we got the Pelicans and we got the Detroit Pistons. Um, this line opened at 12. It opened at 218 and a half. It's down to 217, so money coming in on the under. Uh, I actually wrote, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually wrote a Detroit team total under down last night, but I didn't make a play. So let's jump into it. Uh, so for New Orleans, uh, of course, Brandon Ingram is going to miss the game. You get a Pelicans team that's one day rested, third game in four nights still, fourth game in six nights as well, and the last game of a four-game road trip. They are coming off that 23-point win as a two-and-a-half-point dog against the Miami Heat on Friday night. Big game versus the Oklahoma City Thunder coming up on Tuesday as well. And I know we know that that last game, and I probably should have played them just for that reason. They were on the second leg of a back-to-back, -back, and I didn't like their numbers in that spot against Miami. But uh, we know the Pelicans are balling right now, man. Brandon Ingram or no Brandon Ingram? Uh, this team is eight and two straight up, seven, two and one against the spread in their last 10. That game in Miami meant a lot to them. The way Miami was able to come into their gym and stump them uh, the way that they did, you know, earlier in February when CJ McCollum had left. Uh, but no Brandon Ingram, no problem. Now you get a Detroit team. You, you go into Detroit, you get a Detroit team that's really struggling to score the ball. I've been saying that over the last week. Uh, Jalen Duran is actually listed as questionable with back spasms. You got Taj Gibson, uh, Samante Fantecchio. And Quentin Grimes all listed is out. So this Detroit offense is still going to struggle to score points, in my opinion. Uh, you don't have a lot of scores out there outside of Kay Cunningham and Jalen uh, and, and, and uh, Jaden Ivey. They do have one day's rest. It's the final game of a three-game homestand and the first leg of a back-to-back. -back. They actually got to go to New York and take on the, the red the red hot New York Knicks uh, tomorrow. So not the greatest spot for Detroit. It is the final game of that three-game homestand. They are three and seven straight up, five and five against the spread uh, in their last 10, but they're 0 and five straight up and only one and four against the spread in their last five. And to me, it makes a lot of sense because when I think about Detroit, they always struggle to shoot the ball. Um, Detroit scores a lot of points in the mid range because Kay Cunningham shoots the ball there. Jaden Ivey shoots the ball there. They, they, they try to attack the rim because they always struggle to score from the outside. And that was one of the reasons that that I wanted to kind of look towards the Detroit team total under. I'm just not sure how how motivated the Pelicans are going to be. So I'll probably stay off of it. Uh, tell you guys a couple, little bit more about the game, and then we'll keep it pushing. You get a Pelicans team that's seven and three straight up. Hold on, let me just double check this. Yeah, so head to head, the Pelicans are seven and three straight up, five and five against the spread in their last ten. They've won the last six uh, head to head matchups against Detroit. They've covered the last uh, four, the last five. In the earlier game this season that was played in New Orleans was 125 to 116. New Orleans won that game as four and a half point favorite. So uh far as the total, like I said, it's dropping. You got a Pistons team that's 4-0 to the under on their team total in the last four. Uh, Pelicans 4-1-1 four, one one against the spread. Uh, after the All-Star break when their road favorites winning by about 13 points, which is exactly where you see this spread at right now. 
Um, and I talked a little bit about the X's and O's, but the Pelicans, they're attacking the rim a lot. Detroit is last in opponent rim accuracy uh, over the last two weeks. So if Duran doesn't play, uh, it could probably get worse. Like it could get really, really bad. Uh, one advantage that Detroit does have is that they're the number one offensive rebounding team over the last two weeks. And the Pels are allowing the six most offensive rebounds. But that's Duran dependent, in my opinion. Um, outside of that, Detroit struggles to score the ball. Like I said, they're taking, a, they're taking the second most shots at the paint and their 10th in the accuracy. Uh, New Orleans, they're, they're limiting their opponents to seven fewer shots in the paint and ninth worst field goal percentage as well in that area over the last two weeks. So Detroit team total under this number was a hundred and a half last night would be the way I would play it. Or maybe you even look towards a Pelicans team total over. Uh, I think that's really just dependent upon if Jalen Duran is playing. If Detroit play, if Duran plays, uh, I think it helps the offense. Of course, it's going to help the defense. But without them, they probably get smoked the same way they did against Boston. As long as the Pelicans want to come out here and smoke them, I think that they absolutely could. We know that the Pelicans' first half has been cashing. They're the be uh, second best first half team uh, in the in the association behind the behind the Boston Celtics, of course. So that's the way I would look. But like I said, I'm not definitely I'm staying away from this one until I know uh, the Jalen Duran news. I need to know if he's playing or not. And that's an early start time game as well. The game starts at three ten Eastern, uh, which probably both of those teams are on the East Coast, so it probably doesn't favor either one of them. Uh, you know, slightly more than the other. And I didn't look and see. I know Detroit has played the more uh, earlier games this season, but I didn't look into that. Matter of fact, I'll check real quick. Let me just check it real quick because we got two matinee starts today, and sometimes that's important in the handicap. Uh, let's see if we can look at the Pistons just real quick. Uh, see if we can look at the Pistons real quick in these earlier games this season. They are 2-6 and six straight up, 5-3 and three against the spread, 5-3 and three to the under. Losing by about three points per game. Uh, and they've only all of them have been in Detroit except two. Um, so most recent ones, they they did cover against the Heat. They covered against the Clippers, uh, but they lost both of them. They covered, they lost and didn't cover against the Magic. And the last five have actually all gone under. So it started three and oh to the over. Last five have actually gone to the under. If we look at the Pelicans in the same spot, just do some. Some live capping. Shout out to my guy Ronald Cobain, a little less cat. We see that the Pelicans are. Let's see. The Pelicans. Let's see how many early games they played. The Pelicans one and one straight up, one and one against the spread. They they beat the Spurs by thirty six, and they lost to the Mavericks by five. Um, so just the third game. Both of those games have trended towards the over two and zero to the over in both games. So the Pelicans playing a lot of offense, but they're not playing as much defense uh, in this spot is what the numbers are telling me for these earlier start time games. So maybe a Pelicans team total over uh, is the way it will look based off of that. Let's get into the next game real quick. Well, matter of fact, let's check out. Let's check out the comments. I want to see what you guys are saying about this one. Uh, let's go back to the top. What's up to my guy, Prolific? Top of the morning to you. What's up, Eric? Jeff? Young Harlow? He says, who cashed last night on that Brooklyn game? Uh, I think a lot of us did, Jeff. Hopefully they did. Prolific reminded people to hit the like button. He said, smash that like button. What's up? Uh, appreciate that, Prolific. What's up, Jamie? Top of the morning to you. Jay Juice, what's going on, my brother? Who day? Elijah says, time to cash out today. Uh, Ramtown723, what's going on, my brother? Sean, my guy, long time, long, long, long time uh, uh, follower and supporter. So shout out to my guy, Sean. Justin, RL, what's going on, man? Tasha? Uh, Sam, what's going on? Peasy, it's man, my guys are in here. Y'all ready for the betting on Sunday? Zachariah, uh, prolific said he took Pelly's first half. Uh, Fox Five, appreciate you for tapping in as always. Always, Sam says very engaging and, and, and informative content, um, and format with great discussions about how uh, season flows. Appreciate that. What's up, Will? He says, What up, though, Chris? Appreciate your hard work and, and great content, my brother. I appreciate that, man. It is a lot of work that goes into a lot of this stuff, but you guys know that. Uh, Sam says the consistency of being able to enjoy a vibe uh, with making a guarantee uh, it just overcommit to. Uh, and I think he might have. He says, I never uh, make a play in a timely manner. <laughs> um, Fox says, uh, Fox Five says, Zion points prop worth a look. Man's definitely uh, going to bully some of those kids. Yeah, if he if he's locked in, Fox Five, I could not talk you off. He did. Uh, he's, he is coming off a game where I think his points were set at 25 and a half against Miami, and he, uh, he did not. He did not have a good offensive performance in that game, but they still got the win, though. Uh, what's up, Free Sauce? He says, I'm feeling CJ over eight and a half rebounds and assists at minus 105. 
uh, with no Ingram. That's the that's the play. I think that is absolutely the play. If I was playing a player player prop, I'd be looking at I'd be looking at CJ as well, especially with no Brandon Ingram. Uh, we know that Trey Murphy is going to be shooting, and CJ is going to take over the ball handling, uh, you know, responsibilities. Him and Zion. Zion has been a, a like a power forward, um, uh, power forward uh, point guard. He's been a for a, a point forward. We'll call it that. What's up, Tariq? Uh, Anthony likes the Pels in the first half. Uh, Vaughn says non-conference double-digit favorites are 33 and 12 against the spread since the All-Star break. That's 73. percent He said, "I got to take it." Played the Pels first half and full game on on MMG uh, on BetMG in, mm, on BetMGM at minus 11. He says, "Love even more if Durant sits." And EQ says, "I'm willing to lay the points with the Pels in the first half as well." Uh, what's up to a my guy Avery says, "Wake up and get money." Uh, been a little late but glad i got to catch a live show uh appreciate you for tapping in avery young og says he took the pels team total over so a lot of love towards the pelicans a little bit on the first half a little bit on the full game dexter my guy he says made a live like button smash appreciate that tasha says she personally took the trifecta spot she think the pels roll here first quarter first half and full game ernie says thanks bro i'm in houston uh <clears throat> i'm on i was on houston last night okay uh, success is what you make it says underdog weekend seem like the dogs barking on the on the weekend for some reason uh dogs got smoked some dogs got smoked yesterday so i know the spurs got smoked um who else lost last uh the denver didn't cover last night uh portland covered um who else who else who else who else i was looking at that last night I, i'll look at it a little bit more later j juice likes trey murphy over his five and a half rebounds at plus money and my guy, Hobby, I haven't seen Hobby in a while. What's up, Hobby? He says, running late. He likes CJ over seven and a half rebounds and assists last night. Uh, and for Philly, uh, Fear the Beard, double-double, uh, plus 125. And over his 30 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. RL says he likes the game under 218 and a half for him and the Jazz. Yeah, the Jazz was a dog that never showed up yesterday. That dog got sent to the dog pound yesterday. Um, let's keep it pushing because uh, we do have more games on the board. Let's go. Let's go to the second game. I got to speed up just a tad bit. 76 is in the Clippers. Uh, another early matinee game. We got a 3.30 Eastern time, uh, 3.30 uh, start time on the East Coast. So you get a Philly team. Uh, one day's rest, third game of a four-game road trip in the first leg of a back-to-back. -back. Philly actually plays in Sacramento against the Kings tomorrow. Uh, and this team has not looked great. They're the worst offensive rated team over the last uh, two weeks. They're three and seven straight up, four, five, and one against the spread. Four and one. Straight up, though, however, uh, straight up and against the spread in these matinee games. So Philly plays well in early start time games. Now, granted, some of those games had uh, Joel Embiid uh, be a part of those. On the Clippers side, uh, Norman Powell is listed as questionable. So is Daniel Thice as well. Uh, Tice, uh, is, I think is how you pronounce it. And P.J. Tucker, which I'm not sure how much P.J. Tucker means. But um, he has been playing a, a few minutes. So you got three three big guys, uh, in my opinion, because uh, they, they are already short. We know that uh you know no westbrook so we got to see if the in my opinion i think it's worth seeing if those guys are going to play before you you lock this bet in this clippers team one day's rest first leg of a back-to-back -back. they got the paces on deck for tomorrow so both teams on the first leg of a back-to-back -back. and they off back-to-back wins against the portland trailblazers uh not impressive at all in my opinion portland has looked really really bad they actually started a all rookie lineup last night uh against which lets you know how this season is going against the uh <laughs> against the uh denver nuggets and um, the Clippers, man, I, I can't get there with the Clippers. I think this is a Philly spot. I was so close to betting it last night, and I said, nah, I'll sleep on it. I I'll see. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning. I was handicapping this game. Um, and, and I like Philly. I like Philly in this spot. So just let me continue to break down first. So um, Clippers, 3-3 three and three straight up, 2-4 and four against the spread at Madden A games. They, they don't cover the number. This will be the seventh one, and they've only covered two so far. You get a Philly team that um, – now, granted, they take this with a grain of salt because there's no Embiid, of course, but they are 7-3 and three straight up and against the spread in the last 10 games. This is the first meeting of this season, however. Uh, to, really conflicted on the, on the total here because I said Philly was the worst offensive team over the last two weeks. They're 7-2-1 and one to the under in the last 10 games, only averaging about 100 points. Philly is 4-1 uh, to the under in these early start time games as well, so typically they play better defense. Um, here's why I like Philly, though, because – I looked at the Clippers, right? The Clippers are, um, and I don't know if I'm going to get to the window, but the Clippers are are not in good form, even with the two wins against the Portland Trailblazers. I went back and I was just looking at their, I was looking at their schedule. Um, this Clippers team has played against, 
when you say cupcakes is is who they played against recently so i don't know what their strength of schedule is but i know it can't be great they they just beat the they beat the portland trail blazers twice uh cover one didn't cover one before that they played the hawks and lost at home they also lost to the pelicans they beat the bulls they played and they played the timberwolves so last five games you got the timberwolves and the pelicans in there but you also got the bulls the hawks and the trail blazers twice i'm not I don't think I could just say that I think the Pelicans uh, that I think this Clippers team is back on track because you got two wins against the the 70s uh, against the Portland Trailblazers. The 76ers are also off back to back losses. I think the Clippers are I think because well, sticking to the Clippers, I think because of that, they're slightly overrated here. Defense is bottom five in most categories over the last two weeks is the is this Clippers defense, um, which should help Philly's offense. Um, you get a hungry defensive oriented Philly team that's all back to back losses, no travel because they were in LA uh, against the Lakers on Friday night. And Philly's defense, they 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 match up well against the what the Clippers want to do, just a tad bit. The defense has been elite in the paint. The Clippers only shoot a bunch of threes. Um, same for the Clippers, their defense has been good in the paint. Philly also only wanted to shoot a bunch of threes. Neither one of these teams really hitting a lot of them. Clippers hasn't the the Clippers haven't been good against the fast break. Philly likes to push the pace. Philly also has played a much more difficult schedule over the last few games. Philly's schedule, I want to just tell you guys who they have been playing against because I, I looked into this. Um, like I said, I almost got there. And I, I may still get there, but the Sixers in their last few games, they had the Lakers. Before the Lakers, they had the Suns. Before the Suns, they had the Heat. Before the Heat, they did have the Hornets. But they had the Bucks, the Knicks, the Knicks, the Pelicans. Like this, this the schedule has been a lot more difficult. So the numbers are going to be skewed a little, a little, in my opinion. Uh, to the Clippers in this spot. And I don't think I could get there with the Clippers. Not laying double digits in an early matinee spot, especially on the first leg of a back-to-back. Um, so I like I like, I like, like Philly here, plus the point. That was one way I was thinking about playing it, was plus the points. Uh, you also get a Clippers team. They they don't play well when they're first return at home. Just 4-8 and eight, uh, against the spread as a home favorite returning from a road game, uh, including 1-3 and three straight up and against the spread in their last four. So for whatever reason, when they come back home, they don't play well in that first game. They're also just two and five against the spread as a home favorite laying double digits. So it's it's Philly or nothing for me in this game. I I, I contemplated whether I wanted to take uh, the points with Philly plus 10 uh, if I wanted to take their team total over because I told you guys that that I think, um, you know, the Clippers defense has been well, it's been cheeks for sure. Um, you know, la- bottom, like I said, bottom five in a lot of offensive category, a lot of defensive categories over the last two weeks. So I think Philly being able to get out on a break, they could, should be able to score here. The one thing I didn't like is that, you know, the Clippers do have some some advantages as far as the way that they've been able to score the basketball as of late against this Philly defense on the opposite side as well. So um, I still think motivation spot, you got Clippers off two straight wins, first game back home, not the greatest spot, uh, and two, two, two cupcake wins. And Philly, I think they'll be the more, more motivated team. So I like the 76ers here, man. I didn't play it quite yet. The number hasn't moved yet. Uh, I'll see what happens with Norman Powell, what happens with, uh, you know, Daniel Theis, um, what happens with P.J. Tucker. But Philly don't have anybody on the injury report. And um, like I said, I gave you guys a lot of trends for why, um, you know, I like this Philly team to be able to cover and keep this within the number. So that's those are my thoughts on the game. Let's see what you guys are on here. Looks like nothing. <laughs> um Fox Five says, uh, "Jazz got smoked." Tasha said, uh, "Sean says Tasha right all, all pels all day." Vaughn says he plays Zubac rebounds. Uh, Philly's offense struggles. 76ers bottom eight in rebound chances allowed over the last four games. Tasha says she's off for this game. And shout out to the light barrier. Okay, yeah, I'm not laying ten with the with the with the with the Clippers. Put it like that. I also considered maybe um, you know maybe a team maybe a first half. Just because the Clippers always come out slow. I didn't look at the ATS numbers, but whenever they play early, whenever they play in a, a matinee spot, especially at home, their offense just never comes to play early. So um, I like Philly. I think they did a dog that could bark today here in this one. Let's keep it pushing. Next game up, we got the Miami Heat at the crib playing four points against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, so Cleveland uh looking deep into this game you got so no dean wade he is uh supposed to return here soon uh based on some of the stuff i was reading from the beat reporters donovan mitchell continues to be out no max truce but evan mobley is listed as questionable um after missing the last nine games so he could potentially return for cleveland and and lord knows they need him um also something that wasn't reported uh, just some inside the inside scoop i got um from some of the beat writers on jared allen 
he had a he has a, a very bad hand laceration on his hand uh right between his index finger and uh his thumb he like busted open uh hitting the backboard he banged it real hard hitting the backboard he needed some glue to kind of close it uh the beat writer said that it looked really nasty and painful after the game uh because and this was on friday of course so something to keep an eye on i'm not i didn't even see him listed as questionable so maybe he's gonna try to play through it uh this Cavs team one day rest second straight road game back-to-back -back losses and non-covers against the minnesota timberwolves uh on friday they're four and six straight up five and five against the spread in their last 10 just one and three straight up and against the spread in their last four so they really really struggled on the Miami side, Hami Hakes Jr. listed as questionable. Same thing with uh, Cody, uh, Caleb Martin, uh, both questionable with ankle injuries. They'll still be without Duncan Robinson, Kevin Love, uh, and Tyler Hero. All those guys remain out. Miami, uh, one day's rest as well. Second of a four-game homestand, coming off the 23-point loss as a two-and-a-half-point favorite. This team is just four and six straight up, three and seven against the spread in their last 10, one and three against the spread in their last four. Uh, but they are nine and three straight up eight and four against the spread when they're a home favorite laying four points or less. Now this of course just happened against the Pelicans uh, and they got smoked, but that Pelicans team and this key Cleveland Cavalier team are nothing alike. Uh, not with the way that the injuries uh, are for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So as much as I don't want to take Miami in this spot, I kind of feel like they are the right side head to head. This is the fourth and final game of, of the season between the two teams. Miami won the first one in Cleveland. Cleveland won the second one in Miami. Miami won the third one in Cleveland uh, earlier this week. Uh, 107 to 104 uh, in Cleveland as a three-point dog. That game went over to 208, and you see this one open lower. So we're going to talk a little bit about the total. Uh, but from an X's and O's perspective, Cleveland wants to shoot uh, at the rim. Miami's great there. And Cleveland wants to shoot a bunch of above the break threes. Miami's not so great there. So if Miami can get – if if Cleveland can get hot from three, they got a chance in this game. Um, you need Sam Merrill to hit a bunch of threes. You need Darius Garland to take and make a bunch of threes. Same thing with Karis LeVert. Gorgeous knee uh, Miami shooting a ton of threes in the corner as well. They're not making them. And Cleveland is top 10 defensively from that shot zone over the past two weeks. Both of these teams are excellent in transition defense and neither team pushes the pace. So I like that. I know that this is a very, very low tunnel, total, uh, but I kind of like the under. I haven't gotten there yet. I want to see what happened, you know, with the injury report. Just make sure we get the, the, the clarifications because I definitely want Jared Allen to be a part. Um, but the totals are six and four to the under in the last 10 head to head matchups. Miami eight and two to the under in the last 10. Both teams bottom three in pace over the last two weeks and a very, very strong trend. I'm always looking for the trends. One of my systems say that when two teams play each other in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, a week time frame, which these two teams did, the previous game goes under in the regular season. But the total opens up lower. Those games are 93, 55, and 5 to the under. That's about 63%, 68.2% said that this game goes under. Um, that's when two teams play within two weeks. The first game goes over, which it probably shouldn't have went over. They just got hot early, and then nobody could score late. Uh, those games, if the total opens lower, then it's typically because the game's going to go under, 63%. So I like the under a little bit more, maybe even a Cleveland Cavaliers team total under. Uh, Miami has been solid defensively but maybe you include them because their defense really uh their offense really isn't great either so uh team maybe a team total under for the cast but i do like the full game under 203 uh was surprised to see wake up and see that the total hadn't moved uh, a lot at all i think 203 might be right on par but you know whoever wins this game could easily just score like 97 points it could be like 97 to 95 um so under or nothing for me in this spot uh and like i said i do kind of lean towards miami um just can't back cleveland with all the injuries that they got LJ says five. My guy, LJ, me and LJ will be on with Jay Money at one o'clock Eastern time today as well. He says, uh, what up, LJ? He says five out of six games today call uh, possibly go could, could possibly go under uh, best bet. He likes Dame over 23 and a half points. OK, I know you're going to break that down a little bit more uh, a little bit later. So interested to hear that breakdown. LJ Tasha says she's on Miami. Uh, Kim, she says she likes Philly Pelicans, Thunder, Cavs. I'm thinking this parlay. Okay. Hey, best of luck if you parlay in them. EQ says he got a feeling uh, that Mobley plays. He's guessing. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do think it's interesting he got upgraded to questionable. And um, Tasha likes that Miami team total over 103. Freesaw said can only look at Garland under his 20 and a half points. He says he'll take a shot on the Cavs just in case uh, he does get rolled in. I could definitely see it. Um, but like I said, you kind of want to monitor. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but like I said, that, that hand laceration is something you're not going to really read over the internet too much uh, with Jared Allen. Vaughn says he leans under. 
um, and probably will get there. What's up, Ty? Appreciate you for tapping in as well. Let's keep it pushing, man. Next game up. So, yeah, for me, I lean Miami in this spot, and I definitely lean towards <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I definitely lean towards the under 203 if I had to bet the game. Let's go to the next one. And there's some good games on the board today for a Sunday. We got the Golden State Warriors. Um, they will be in Minnesota today getting two and a half points. This line opened at three, I want to say. I think it's, I think when I first saw it, I saw it at three. I just want to double check real quick. And we are getting some movement on some of these games. Yeah, opened at, I saw it open at three last night. Um, two and a half, down to two at some places, still two and a half. Total not really moved. And a lot of these games haven't moved. Like, this one did go up. It opened at 217 and a half. It's up to 219. But outside of that, you know, it's pretty, it's primarily the same. So we get a Golden State team. And this is a, these are difficult games to handicap for sure. Uh, I see some Tasha said hard game. Um, so Golden State, um, one day's rest. This is the first game of a three game homestand, a three game road trip for them. I wrote him homestand, three game road trip for them. Um, I, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. So Golden State, one day's rest, first game after a three game homestand. Um, at least a four game road trip on deck for them. They're coming off a 12 point loss as a four and a half point favorite against the Indiana Pacers. They also lost to the Knicks uh, before they beat the um, Memphis Grizzlies as well. So they've been kind of teetering, you know, back and forth. Golden State needs every win that they can get. I'm not sure if you guys are paying attention, but the Houston Rockets are, are definitely gunning for that 10th spot in the Western Conference. And now, all of a sudden, they're one and a half games behind the Golden State Warriors, which we thought that they didn't have a chance to catch up with them at all. Golden State really, really needs to win. They're four and six straight up and against the spread in their last 10 games, only a game and a half above uh, Houston in the Western Conference. And Houston blasted, um, you know, this Utah Jazz team yesterday. Uh, Golden State's also just five and 12 straight up on the road as a dog. But they are 11 and six against the spread. So this is a game where they typically play. You also got a Minnesota team that still got Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert listed as questionable. Anthony Edwards been playing, but Rudy Gobert did miss the last game. I, I do think he missed the last game on Friday. This Timberwolves team off one day's rest, third straight home game for them. They do get one extra day of rest after this game as well, uh, and they play against Detroit. So the Golden State Warriors play uh, on Tuesday. They'll get tomorrow off. That'll be a travel day. The Golden State uh, this Memphis, this Minnesota team doesn't play again until Wednesday. So they get an extra days off and they get Detroit. So they 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 have, you know, I, I think it's a little bit better spot for this Minnesota team. Now, granted, Golden State plays a lot better on the road. I just told you guys they were 11 and 6 against the spread as road dogs. The Timberwolves, 6 and 4 straight up and against the spread in their last 10. They are 4 and 1 straight up and 5 and 0 against the spread in their last 5 as well. Um they're four and two straight up, two and three against the spread as a four point favorite. So they haven't always been covering when they when they've been a when the like a short favorite, four points or less. They're also five and one to the under in this spot, including five straight unders when they are a short four point home favorite or less this season. Head to head, Minnesota has won six of the last ten, uh, covered f five five of the ten spreads, so about 50-50 there. You get a double revenge spot for Golden State. They did lose both of the games earlier this season. We remember Draymond choked Rudy Gobert out and then missed the, of course, missed the second game, and they didn't have Steph Curry in as well. So it's a it's a lot going on here, man. I do think that you want to wait uh for the Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, you want to wait for the Rudy Gobert news. Golden State should have uh, everybody healthy. I think Moody might have been on the injury report. Um, but Rudy Gobert is is definitely big in this game. What does Golden State want to do? And it's crazy because when I was looking into this. Uh, real quick, if I match these two, match these two teams up on the floor, the, over the last two weeks, Golden State offense is you know barely barely top ten. They're ninth in point score per one hundred possessions. Uh, they they are doing a better job of protecting the basketball, just uh, eighth in fewest turnovers. But and they are the number one offensive rebounding team in the league as well. Um, but they're not shooting a bunch of free throws. Not shooting a bunch of free throws at all. This Timberwolves defense right outside the bottom. Right outside the top 10, I got him 11th at points allowed per 100 possessions. Uh, defensively, go, this was the reason why I like the Pacers on Friday. Golden State defense is really, really falling off. I'm not sure if it's going to come back just because they're on the road. Defensively, over the last two weeks, 22nd in points allowed per 100 possessions, 21st in opponent effective field goal percentage, uh, giving up a ton of offensive rebounds, the ninth most. Uh, the only thing they're not doing is they're not fouling. And looking at their offense, this is what really intrigued me. Because Golden State shoots above a, a ton of above the break threes. That's really all they've been doing over the, you know, for the for the you know for the full season. They haven't really been a, like shooting that many above the break threes. 
Um, I got Golden State as the 18th uh, in, in frequency, but more of their shots has actually come from the long mid-range. They're seventh in frequency, 17th in accuracy, and you get a Minnesota team that's a number 11, number 10 as, par, as far as opponent um, long mid-range frequency and accuracy over the past two weeks. So that doesn't bode well for the 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 this uh, Golden State team because that's, that's where their shots are coming from. Um, go to state also just not shooting a ton of threes. They're, they're actually 26, which is the fourth uh, fewest. They, they've attempted the four fewest threes over the last two weeks. And Minnesota does a really good job of running teams off the line. They're actually fifth in opponent three point frequency. Um, they're not doing the greatest job of covering it, but the, the worst above the, the, the worst three point shot that they aren't covering is actually the corner three. And go to state's not shooting a bunch of corner threes. Um, Minnesota's allowing teams to shoot 40 percent. From the corner three over the last two weeks, Golden State isn't taking a ton of those. They're 29th in frequency, which is second worst. So it's not not the greatest spot for you know for Golden State. Um, you know, in the, in this spot specifically, the way that the way that they're playing offense and the way that the Minnesota Tim, Timberwolves are playing defense, Golden State also doesn't run the break. The Timberwolves have been great and limited in that. Um, so it's 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 difficult, man. But I don't really want to bet against Golden State in this spot. If I'm being honest with you guys. Just because I know what they're capable of, I just I don't know what it is, man. I think they got to fix the defense. Um, and like I said, I do want to wait on the Rudy Gobert news. So just wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into this one on the show and let you guys know how I was looking at it. But it's not a game that I played. And uh, I definitely got to speed up. It's 30, I'm 33 minutes in. Granted, it's a small slate for today, but I, I was trying to get in and get out uh, on, the, on the show for today. So wait for the Rudy Gobert news. If he plays, um, that could be helpful for Minnesota, of course. They'll be a much better rebounding team. Defensively, they're going to bring it, and I, it's really just difficult, man. Golden State, while I want to back them, um, their defense is just falling off a cliff over the last two weeks. And offensively, they're not the same team. Will the Timberwolves be able to limit them from shooting threes? Uh, if they can, I think they got a chance to win the game. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Um, Tasha says, hard game. I said that. Fox 5 said, probably taking Golden State on the money line, but I'm not comfortable getting some points. But I'm more comfortable getting some points with them. I'll probably lie bet this if they do go down at some point. I could see that. That could be a good spot. Um, let's see. Vaughn says, want to get there with Kaminga points. He played a horrible game versus the Pacers last game. Not finished capping it, but he probably will get there. Now, the difference, we know uh, this is why I didn't like Kaminga in that last game. The Indiana Pacers do a really good job of limiting teams. Uh, well, no, nah, I take that back. Never mind. Kaminga should have had a good game, put it like that, because the Pacers run teams off the three-point line, which is what Golden State likes to do. Ty says, I was at the, uh, I was on the Rockets last night, was on that blowout. Hobby says, uh, going to rejoin uh, membership, but, but been super busy uh, from betting. He says, he on, he's, I'm on the over 219. I think Minnesota can expose Golden State uh, in the paint and vice versa. Golden State from the three-point line, that overdid me dirty versus the Indiana Pacers. I actually like the under, and it did cash as well. Robert likes, uh, he says, the Celtics cash for him. Markel says he's going to pass. Zachariah says, if Rudy plays, then his blocks is a good look uh, with with uh, with rebounds. So maybe maybe putting the two together. Uh, like I said, it's a difficult game, man. It's a super difficult game. Maybe it is just a live betting spot, kind of like um, who mentioned live betting the spot? Somebody mentioned live betting the spot. Maybe that's it. Another difficult game, and I don't even know what my Bucks graphic is. It's supposed to be a, <laughs> supposed to be a Bucks graphic right here, man. That's the Thunder are playing today. Uh, OKC, <clears throat> excuse me, OKC is getting three uh, points. Number coming down to two and a half now. Uh, in in Milwaukee today, total opened at two thirty one and a half, and it's still about two thirty one. This is another game where you know the the the, the line didn't move uh, at pretty much at all. You do see some money coming in on on, on uh, OKC in this spot. And it's another difficult game. So OKC has nobody on the injury report. One day's rest. Second straight road game of a three-game road trip. They got a real big game against the Pelicans on Tuesday in New Orleans. And they're 8-2 and two straight up, but just 3-7 and seven against the spread in their last 10 games. They did slow start really, really slow. And I don't know why. OKC is starting the games really, really slow. They started slow against the Jazz. They started slow against the Toronto Raptors of all teams. Still end up winning and covering that game. They won by 20. Now, the Milwaukee side, no injuries as well. I did see Giannis listed as probable. You get, do get them more rested. Two days of rest. Uh, this is the second of a three-game homestand. They got the Lakers coming into town on Tuesday. This team is 6-4 and four straight up. And it gets a spread in their last 10. 3-1 and one straight up. And it gets a spread in their last four. Head-to-head, -head, Milwaukee does own the head-to-head -head matchup, but they haven't played in forever. 
It'll be the first meeting this season. Milwaukee has won seven of the last 10. They've won five in a row uh, in the head-to-head -head matchup, and they've covered three in a row as well. Um, this was a game, man, where I know the Bucs played really, really well on Sunday, and I know that the Bucs are a little bit more rested. I can't do I can't get there with, with the Bucks defense though. I, I I just I really, really can't. Um I know that they'll be fired up for this game. I know OKC hasn't looked great, but we gotta remember something about OKC, man. And, and OKC hasn't looked good. That's why I didn't bet the game yet. But OKC is seven and four straight up as a road dog. They've won seven of eleven games as a road dog this season. They're also seven, three, and one against the spread in those games. Um maybe an OKC team total over. Um, I, I like I, I pause because I'm like, man, I need to dive a little bit deeper into this one. Milwaukee has been uh short favorites. This was a pause for me. Milwaukee has been short favorites three points or less three times this season. They're three and oh straight up and against the spread in all three of those games. So that that gave me a little bit of hesitation because you find both of these teams in really good spots. When I was looking a little deeper into the game, kind of matching the teams up on the floor, I want to let you guys know what I saw real quick from, from OKC's offensive perspective. Uh, looking at their offense versus uh, this Milwaukee's defense that's been really, really bad as of late. Um, this So last two weeks, neither one of these teams have been good, actually. Uh, last two weeks, Minnesota, Milwaukee, 28th in points allowed per 100 possessions, 29th in opponent of, uh, effective field goal percentage, 25th in uh, enforcing turnovers, so not forcing a lot of turnovers. They have done a really good job of limiting uh, offensive rebounds, which is something that, you know, uh, OKC doesn't do in the first place. They don't get a ton of offensive rebounds. And the, the Bucks are doing a really good job. They're fouling at the fourth few, the, the fourth fewest rate over the last two weeks. The, the, the thing with OKC is their offense is actually taking a step back. This was the second best offense throughout the majority of the season behind the, the, um, the Boston Celtics, of course. Over the last 10 games, though, the, the Houston Rockets actually are the second best offense behind Boston. OKC's offense is 11th in points scored per 100 possessions, ninth in opponent in effective field goal percentage, uh, and a tenth in turnover percentage, eighth in free throw rate. So they're still doing a really good job of all of those different things. Milwaukee, their offense has been good. They're sixth in points scored per 100 possessions, seventh in effective field goal percentage, not turning the ball over, not getting a bunch of offensive rebounds either. And OKC's been doing a really good job of limiting that as well. And the Bucks are shooting a ton of free throws. OKC's fouling a ton, fourth highest rate. The Bucs are shooting the fourth most free throws uh, over the past two weeks. OKC defense has not been great either. And I kind of lean towards the over for that as far as uh, opponent effective field goal percentage, allowing teams to shoot 57%. So that does not bode well when you see a, a offense that's seventh in opponent, uh, seventh in effective field goal percentage, and then a defense that's 26 in that category as well. But OKC's def offense, they got major matchup advantages. They are fourth. 14th, I'm sorry, in paint frequency, uh, number one in paint accuracy. So that's SGA getting downhill, attacking the rim, best team in the league over the last two weeks. The Bucs are last in opponent accuracy, allowing teams to shoot 50% in the paint over the past two weeks. Uh, it's the same thing from the mid-range, like all mid-range shots. Bucks are, I'm sorry, the, the Thunder, 15th in that category. Uh, so right in the middle of the pack, but they're second in accuracy, shooting about 50% from there. The Bucks last dead last again they're allowing teams to make uh 48 percent of their shots uh in the in the from the mid-range and they're giving that shot up a lot it's a lot of red in this graphic that i'm looking at which is not good for the bucks defense so i do think that there's ways that you know the the okc can be successful in this game you also look at you know this just this their transition defense it's been pretty good man um okay matter of fact not pretty good okc is the best uh, uh, transition defense in the league, and they're getting out and pushing the pace as well. Sixth in frequency over the last two weeks, and you got a Bucks team that's given up, uh, you know, ranked 27th in point score in uh point score per 100 possessions in the transition game as well. So the Bucks are not doing a good job of you know limiting teams in this position. Real quick, if I flip it to the Bucks offense, because I, I do want to tell you guys, like, because I think the the, the transition part of the game of this game specifically is important so if i flip it to milwaukee on offense and i look at um and i look at okc on defense which they, their defense hasn't been as great recently but transition defense the bucks are shooting a bunch of shots at uh long mid-range the third in in frequency fifth in accuracy the hold on hold on that's definitely not right 
Let me let me change something real quick. I, I looked at Toronto. So do 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 OKC. All right, OKC. So looking at OKC um, defense over the last two weeks. Well, just match matching the two seasons on the floor. The Bucks are shooting a ton of shots in mid range. They're third in frequency, fifth in accuracy. OKC's actually been good there. They're third in frequency, so they're allowing the third fewer shots and eighth in accuracy. So they've done a really good job there. The other shot that the Bucks have been shooting a lot of is the above the break three. They're shooting, they're shooting the second most and making that the four fives clip. OKC's done a really good job of limiting that. They've been pressuring, you know, teams above the break, but which is forcing teams to shoot the third fewest threes against them from above the break. But they are cooking them. They get the the, the OKC has been getting cooked from above the break. Uh, actually allowing the third highest percentage. So, um, and they're not doing a good job of defending the three in general, but they are doing a really good job of, of uh, you know, the fast break. The Bucks aren't really running it as much, 21, 20, uh, 28th in frequency. But OKC's top three in, t- in, to- in teams' points, off of transition and limited transition and points per play. So that's a major, major advantage, I think, in this game and I, I like i said i like okc man i didn't bet the game um quite yet but i did do a deep dive and you guys got to see it as well let's see what you guys are saying in this one um yeah i like the bucks i see a lot of bucks love here let's see um box five says bucks or nothing eq says bucks minus three fear the deer uh marie says um if warriors been good on the road then warriors money line potentially but they they have not been good at home at all. Tasha says she likes OKC. OKC first half, Bucks second half. Wu Rizza says over. That's what I was leaning as well, Wu Rizza. I think that this could be a high scoring game. Matter of fact, I might just play the over. I might just play the over. I don't see either one of these defense stepping up uh, in this spot. I, I really don't. And both of them have matchup advantages as well. Vaughn says the Bucks struggle versus guard. So give me SGA points. Won't take it. Won't make it too complicated. That, that could be the better play there. Avery says Bucks spread. Uh, we don't lose at home. Give me the more rested team that's been playing well over the past few weeks. Okay. Um, Maurice says SGA and Chet was too busy at the Drake concert. Hmm. That's something to take into consideration. Chad says OKC has no answer for Giannis. Uh, Dort ain't going to cut it. They they create a wall. We've seen them create a wall. If you think that they have no, no chance to slow it down Giannis, what do the Thunder typically do? That's when they typically double team. So look at Giannis' assists more so than his points. Um, but they are what rested in this spot. Zachariah says if SGA gets uh gets Brook and ISO, it's gonna be barbecue chicken. That's a fact. We know that they do not play well against teams that run out and get out and run in transition. So I, I cannot talk you off of that. Markel said he's like, actually leans towards the under. I, I more like the over. Uh Avery says OKC been favorites in the pat in the last couple games, now catching points. Um it, it ain't but so many teams, Avery, in the league that's gonna be that's gonna be laying points in, in Milwaukee, though. You, you would you agree with that? Like who who's laying points in the Western Conference in Milwaukee? Maybe Denver. Um, but yeah, no, you ain't gonna find too many teams laying points in Milwaukee. Tasha says Milwaukee uh has been a second half team. Uh, not last Sunday. They scored 80 points in the first half against Phoenix. EQ says if you like OKC in this spot, um, wouldn't you take wouldn't you make uh wouldn't you want more than three points in these short get and I, I gave you guys the numbers seven and four straight up. And seven to three uh, against the spread as as road dogs, and typically they short road dogs because they win the game. Um, Han asked us, "How do I rewind? Looking for Pels and Clips game? You just go, hit the back button. <laughs> uh, you can start the show over too." Avery says, "Jay Crowder was uh, will slow down SGA and Chat will be busy with Brook who guard in the paint when thirty four get downhill. They'll create a wall. Trust me." Um, Mark Dagnall, this isn't the first time that they played against SGA or Embiid or any of that. Darren likes SGA points. Tasha says OKC first half and Buck second half. She likes OKC on the money line. Um, so we do got some OKC love. He says OKC. Ernest says Bucks. Uh, Elijah says um, I'm on OKC spread. So it's, it is some love. It's, this is a d- very difficult game. I see people on both sides. Um, success says likes OKC. Um, contemplating OKC team total over. Uh, uh, Hood Fave uh, Benji says that Bucks that Bucks up for grab. I'm sticking to the total and player props for that game. Yeah, I agree, man. I do. I do agree. I think it's a little bit easier to play the total. I like the over. I play the over a little bit more. Momo says uh, Bucks low key trash. Give me OKC. Okay. 
Eric says over for the Bucks game as well. Chad says that's too small. It's too small of a wall for Giannis. Um, uh, Hood face says Bucks games definitely going over. Give him the over. Uh, I haven't been playing overs. Y'all, if you've been riding with me for a while, you know I ain't give out an over in a while. This is one of the ones that I like today. And I like that Clippers game to go over too. Uh, and Jeff says, is Giannis back? Yeah, Giannis should play in this game. He is listed as probable. Uh, last comment, Elijah says, I think uh, J-Dub can do a decent job on Giannis. Not going to lie. We'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how it goes. Let's get to the last game. I think I think we only got one more game. And that's why I kind of did a deep dive on, on these games because it's not, it's not a lot of games. So then you get a chance to really, um, you know, um, you get a, a real chance to kind of, you know, deep dive into the games and kind of talk them out a little bit more. So last game up, we have been on here for 47 minutes looking at six games, though. <laughs> last game up, we got the Lakers. Uh, Lot is at three and a half. It opened at three. Um, and the total in this one opened at 241. Another game where you don't see no movement on the total and line only moved half a point. So you get a Pacers team, uh, one day's rest, third game of a five-game road trip, and the front leg of a back-to-back. -back. They don't have to travel because they got the Clippers on deck for tomorrow. Um, Pacers six and four. Straight up and against the spread in their last 10, three and one straight up and against the spread in their last four and back to back wins and covers to start this road trip. Uh, they went to Detroit and smoked them. We won the first half in that spot. Uh, I think they won that game by 18. And then they go into Golden State as a five and a half, four and a half point dog and win that game outright by, I think, 11, 12 points. So for the Lakers, of course, LeBron James is listed as questionable. I think Anthony Davis is, is listed as probable and Torian Prince also listed as probable. A Laker team, um, one day's rest. This is the final game of a four-game road trip before they go to Milwaukee to play the Bucks on Tuesday. And um, this Lakers team is very, 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 very well rested. They didn't cover um, against the Philadelphia 76ers. But before that game, I talked about this on Friday, they had three days rest before that game. So then one game and a day off, still at the crib. To me, that kind of favors the Lakers. They do have back-to-back -back wins. They're six and four straight up. Just four and six against the spread in their last 10, though. And just one in three against the spread in their last four. So, do you trust the Lakers laying points at the crib? Is the question. Um, from a head-to-head -head perspective, you do get the Pacers in another revenge spot. Lakers did go into Indiana and beat them back on December the 9th as three and a half point favorites. Uh, that game went under the 242. I want to say it went under by a tad few points. So let's match these two teams up on the floor real quick and see what we get. We if you know anything about uh let's go, let's go Pacers offense first. Um Versus the Lakers defense. And let's see what we have some matchup advantages at, but for, see what we like for the Pacers here before I get into the comments. So since the All Star break, uh, we got a Pacers team that's seventh in points scored per 100 possessions. Last two weeks, same thing. They're seventh. Uh, his offenses look really, really good. Um, effective field goal percentage, eleventh. Um, turnover percentage, they are second since the All Star break. Fifth over the last two weeks. So they're doing a really good job of taking care of the basketball. Um, offensive rebounding, they, they're 17 and over the last two weeks, 23rd. So they're not getting a lot of offensive rebounds. They are shooting a ton of free throws, 13th in free throw rate, but the Lakers have been the best, the second best team in the, in the last two weeks of limiting teams from getting into the free throw line. Now let's look at the Lakers defense. Middle of the pack and points allowed per 100 possessions right at 16th. They are eighth in opponent effective field goal percentage. So the defense has picked up a little bit. And the Lakers are dead last in force and turnovers. So that's not great at all. This is not a team that gets a bunch of rebounds. We know that the Lakers struggle there, and they also don't force a lot of turnovers. They are uh, pretty good at limiting opponent rebounds, offensive rebounds anyway. 10th uh, in that department over the past two weeks. All right, so I think now it goes to the Pacers, and it's kind of about even. Pacers offense a little bit more than the Lakers defense, but Lakers have major rest advantage here. Um, looking at the Lakers offense versus the Pacers defense, this is where it get interesting in my opinion, because the Lakers are scoring. Uh, this has been a really great offense over the past two weeks, fourth in point score per 100 possessions, um, averaging about 122.2 effective field goal percentage. This is the best team in the league at scoring the ball, um, shooting, you know, getting the shots that they want. Number one in that department. Uh, they are turning the ball over, 17th in, in turnovers, so about middle of the pack there over the past two weeks. Not getting a ton of offensive rebounds, bottom two, but they are shooting the most free throws in the NBA uh, over the past two weeks. So they're making teams foul them and getting to the free throw line. Now the Pacers' defense is where it gets really, really good because the Pacers, and this is why I talked about liking the under 242 against the Golden State Warriors, the Pacers are actually fourth in points scored per 100 possessions. I'm sorry, in opponent points scored. 
They've only given up 109.7 points per, per 100 possessions over the past two weeks. And they play some, some really good competition. They're second in opponent effective field goal percentage as well. They are not forcing a lot of turnovers, 17th uh, in that department. They are middle of the pack, almost bottom 10 in opponent offensive rebounds. They're 19th, and they're, they are fouling a lot. 25th, that's one, the only downside of their defense is that they're putting teams on the free throw line at the fifth highest rate. So when you get into the numbers, the Pacers are elite at the rim. Um, this is their offense, of course. Uh, seventh in frequency, fifth in accuracy over the past two weeks. The Lakers have been a good, doing a good job of limited teams in that department. Fourth in a, opponent rim frequency, but they're 20th in accuracy. So teams are taking advantage of the Lakers in the paint. Same thing for paint. Uh, at the, that's at the rim. Same thing for paint. Restricted area, four feet or, or, or less. Uh, you get a Pacers team that's ninth in both frequency and accuracy. The Lakers allowing teams to shoot, uh, take 19, the 19th highest percentage of their shots from that uh, area, but they are sixth in accuracy. Here's where the Lakers have some matchup advantages. The, 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 the Pacers don't shoot a ton of threes, and, it, and it, they haven't been making a ton of threes either if people have been paying attention. From the corner three, 27th in accuracy. Above the break three, 25th percent in accuracy. And overall, 27th in accuracy as well. And they're not shooting a ton of them either. Only just they're shooting a 28th, uh, which is bottom three, uh, in three-point accuracy over the past two weeks. And the Lakers have really – their defense has been a little bit better in that department, but they are giving up a ton of those shots. Uh, above the break threes, they're giving up the fifth most. Uh, all threes, they're giving up the sixth most as well. But like I said, the Pacers haven't been making them. Here's where it gets 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 uh, a little bit scarier for the Lakers. We know that the Pacers like to push the pace. Third in frequency, second in point score in, in offensive transition. The Lakers are not the greatest in that department. They are 10th in frequency, so they're limiting teams um, to, to 10th fewest fast break opportunities per game, but they're only 18th in points uh, allowed per 100 possessions via the fast break. So they haven't necessarily been the greatest of limiting teams in that department. Um, Pacers also do a really good job of scoring off steals. Uh, there, I got them at third in frequency, so they're pushing the pace off steals, pushing the pace off rebounds as well. 10th in that department, and they're second and, and ninth in both of those as far as scoring off points off of steals and off live rebounds. The Lakers, not so great. Uh, they're giving up the, the seventh most points off steals and um, the, the seventh most points per playoff steals as well. So, this was a then we flip it, and I'm just I'm I'm really just doing a live cap for you guys, letting you guys know how I kind of look at the games, and now I kind of go in and look at the trends as well. Um, looking at the looking at the Lakers, that was the Lakers uh, defense versus the Pacers offense. Now we flip it. No, that was the I'm sorry, that was the Pacers defense versus the Lakers offense. So now we flip it and look at the Lakers. The Lakers have been shooting a ton of shots. Honestly, they're shooting a ton of shots from everywhere. It's not mid range. Uh, at the rim, 11th in frequency, first in accuracy. And the Pacers, they do a really good job of limiting that. Um, 19th in, in frequency, but they're second in accuracy. I'm not sure how. I know Miles Turner isn't necessarily that good of a defender, um, but they're doing a really good job. Like I said, limiting teams to second. Uh, so that's that's a major matchup advantage for the Pacers, where the Lakers, something has to give. The Lakers not going to be able to be number one in, in rim accuracy, and the Pacers be number two in, in you know in, in uh, opponent rim accuracy um, at the you know just shooting shots at the rim. So. That that you got to figure out, you know, what's going to give there. Also, uh, corner three, Lakers shooting a ton of those. Ninth in frequency, second in accuracy, shooting 45% from the corner three. The Pacers are limiting threes. We know that they do a good job of that. Six fewest corner threes, um, but 22nd in accuracy. So when teams do get those shots up, they are making them at a 41% clip. It's a difficult game, man. If I'm being honest to you guys, I looked at all of this already. It's a really difficult game. It's, it's very, very difficult. Um Lakers also shooting, what, 22nd, most threes. They are first in accuracy. Crazy to think that this Lakers team, where, where if you remember at the beginning of the season, they were terrible at three. They are, they are the most frequent. Uh, they are the best accuracy team. They're shooting 43% over the last two weeks from three. Uh, Pacers bottom five. I'm sorry, top five in, in uh, three-point frequency and three-point accuracy. So it's a difficult game, man. It's a very, very difficult game for myself. Of course, you guys know I want to be on the Lakers. The Lakers need all the wins that they can get, of course, as well. Uh, all the teams in the bottom of the West been winning. We see the Dallas Mavericks been winning games. We see uh, all the teams that the Lakers could potentially catch to get out of the play-in tournament been winning games. The Dallas Mavericks, same thing with, um, you know, Phoenix. They Phoenix on a three-game winning streak. Uh, looking a little bit more into it, just giving you guys some offensive numbers and some transition numbers. 
Lakers are number one in half court points scored per 100 possessions over the past two weeks. Uh, D- uh, Indiana's defense hasn't been bad. They're 12th in that department. Um, putbacks, the Lakers don't get a lot of those. Uh, transition offense, the Lakers are not pushing the pace as much. They've actually slowed down. Uh, 19th in frequency. The paces are elite against uh, fast break teams anyway. They're number one in points allowed per 100 possessions in the fast break. And they, and they only allow teams to run the fast break at the ninth lowest percentage as well. So it's a, like I said, it's a very, very difficult game, man. I have no idea what to do with this one, if I'm being honest. I just wanted to break it down for you guys and let you guys know how I was kind of looking at it. Um, Yeah, it's a difficult one, especially with the Lakers do. they I, I, the, the other advantage is that outside of the Lakers being at home, like I said, fourth straight home game, um, one day's rest, they had the rest advantage before as well. The Pacers are on the first leg of a back-to-back with the Clippers on deck tomorrow. I think that could that could kind of, you know, help the Lakers in this spot, in my opinion. Let's see what you guys are saying this one. I'm pretty sure a lot of comments came in. Let's see what you guys are saying. Um, Fox says Pacers money line. Don't overthink it. Tasha says Pacers money line. So people people think think the Lakers are, are fool's goal. Um, Foxy, uh, Tasha says two, 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 two great minds think alike. Hood, Hood Fave says Pacers spread, no brainers. Lakers could still win, but uh, they got major injuries. Meanwhile, the Pacers just missing Mathern. Potentially. Okay. A lot of Pacers love. Bond says the Pacers are 17 and 1 to the under on the road with a game total of under 247. Trend is uh, on a 12 game winning streak currently, heavy on the under. Um, Tasha says, I'm on the Pacers. I am not. Uh, Elijah says what I said, tough game, but leaning Pacers, heavy. Uh, paces spread heavy though so he like he like everybody likes the paces um andre i appreciate you for tapping in uh es what is that espin will um says espin will says uh siakam over seven and a half rebounds he likes that a lot uh andrew says i started following thanks to jay money shout out to my guy jay man i'm gonna be on with him uh at one o'clock eastern uh andrew Kim says paces the cover. EQ likes the paces on the money line as well. It's a lot of paces love in here, man. Marie says every time uh, when all the money is on the Lakers, they lose. Give me the paces money line. Is the is the money? It sounds like from the chat, the money's on the <laughs> on the paces. Uh, Derek says paces third defensive rating in the last seven games. I think it's the under. The Lakers have been pretty good, a little bit better on defense as well. I think I think it's a, I think it's an underplay, man. You get the Lakers, you get the paces in these extremely. Um, you know, high pace games, and I kind of gave you numbers. The numbers, the Lakers haven't been pushing the pace. They've slowed down a lot, and the, you guys are right. The Pacers defense has been really, really good, and that could make this game an under game. I think if I pull the trigger, it will be on the under. Uh, just talking it out with you guys, listening to what people are saying. I, I mentioned this: the 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 Lakers defense hasn't been great. They're 16th, but it's not the worst. They are eighth in opponent effective field goal percentage, and you get the Pacers, like you guys said, fourth best defense um, over the past two weeks. Second and opponent effective field goal percentage. Uh, and they, they're doing a really good job of limiting teams at the rim. And that's where the Lakers like to score a lot of their points. So this this does lean under to what for me as well. Um, I like that. Pace uh Derek says pace of revenge game. Uh last in this in the season tournament as well. Uh I forgot all about the season tournament. Uh the Lakers did smoke them. <laughs> he said the pace is rolled tonight. I don't know if they're gonna roll though. We'll see how that goes. Uh Andrew says, I can't bet the Lakers, they always disappoint me. Derek says Pacers uh, top 11 defensive rated team since the All-Star break. Maurice says Pacers under should be the lock. We don't use the word lock. That, that makes it seem like it's guaranteed that people start putting a lot of money on it. But uh, I like it, though. I do like it a lot. He says Bucks to go over. Laker, Bucks to go over. Lakers go under. Young Harlow says Pacers have a terrible record on the second leg of back-to-back games. I'm on my guys today, so he likes the Pacers as well. Eric likes the under. Um, Hood Faye says, don't get me wrong, though. The Lakers low-key hungry because of their seed. So be turned in, uh, be tuned in um, into that. And he likes, uh, he says Tyrese Halliburton has been inconsistent. Shout out to Josh, my guy. Appreciate you for joining the channel and becoming a member. Um, hopefully we, we cash some tickets. Fox 5 says, now the Lakers would take our cash. That's a fact. And that's why I'm off the game. I'm not playing. The Pacers. That's one thing y'all not gonna convince me to do. I, I don't care how many people on the Pacers. I'm not playing playing the Pacers. I think I like the under a little bit more just because they have been so good defensively. Um, Ump says, yeah, it's Pacers for me. He says, can't ever get the Lakers right though, which is why I like the under a little bit more. Tasha says, true, Chris. He says, I learned from you uh, and from Jay Money as well. 
Yeah, shout out to my guy Jay, man. Shout out to Andrew for becoming a member as well. A couple members joined today. PZ says patience plus four. His his uh he likes that a lot. EQ says the chat is on the Pacers, but the money is on the Lakers. Okay. I haven't looked. Y'all know I don't check money splits. If you've been watching the show for a while, I never check money splits. Elijah says, yep, uh, I learned that tough lesson. Every time uh, LA is a favorite, they lose and take my money. Mitchell uh, says uh, Lakers 70%, 71% of the money uh, on, on the money line on DraftKings. Okay. Markel says, nah, I lean Lakers. He likes the Lakers, but don't trust them though. <laughs> <laughs> uh 57 percent of the spread is on the lakers according to mitchell uh and he's looking at DraftKings. and uh um reminding everybody to go hit the like button if you guys join late uh 74 on the under uh in the lakers on DraftKings as well what's up riz appreciate you for tapping in as always my guy um real quick let's look at some of those let's look at some of those trends real quick uh and then we'll we'll wrap it up i'll do a recap real quick for you guys and we'll wrap up the show uh let's look at the lakers after the all-star break as a home favorite I, that was something that I haven't dived into. Like I said, only six games on the board, so I broke them down with you guys today. Lakers, after the All-Star break, uh, at home specifically. They are 7-3 and three straight up, but only 4-6 and six against the spread. Uh, the Lakers have beat the Spurs, didn't cover. The Wizards didn't cover. The Nuggets, they lost outright. The Thunder, they won and covered. The Kings lost outright, didn't cover. The Bucks, they beat them and covered. Timberwolves beat them and covered. Warriors lost outright, didn't cover. That was the game Anthony Davis got hurt in. They did beat the Hawks, uh, which I don't know how much credit you want to give them for that. The Hawks were on the second leg of a back-to-back as well. And then they, they just beat the Sixers as well. So Lakers winning games, but not covering spreads uh, in this spot. <clears throat> Average line of about four points. Let's look at the Pacers on the road after the All-Star break as well. Five and two straight up. Five and two against the spread, winning by an average of five points, five and no straight up and against the spread in their last five. The only two games that the Pacers lost after the all-star break on the road came against the Pelicans and against the Spurs, which is crazy. They lost to the Spurs. But yeah, those two games were the games that they lost. Since then, they beat the Mavericks, the Magic, the Thunder, the Pistons and the Warriors. Um, all four of those five have actually gone towards the under and they're six and one to the under. Uh, since the all-star break on the road so yeah it's under for me those games are totaling about 229 points now the lakers on the opposite side those games are trending more towards the over they're seven two and one at home after the all-star break um towards the over a little bit more so that's crazy to think man maybe even maybe even a lakers team total under maybe that's the play the paces after the all-star break um I, i mentioned six and one to the under um the only team that went over their team total was the Pelicans. The Pelicans scored 129 points and went over by seven points on their team total. This team held the Spurs under by a point and a half, the Mavs under by six and a half, the Magic under by 14 and a half, the Thunder under by 12, the Pistons under by nine, and the Warriors under by 12. So maybe even if you think the offense is going to play well, which it hasn't, um, the 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 thing about and this is why the Pacers defense has been so good because the, the Pacers have actually um they've only gone over their team total in three games since the all-star break on the road. So out of the eight out of the seven games that they played since the all-star break, they've only they've they've been winning with their defense because they've only gone over their team total three times. But they are they are holding teams under. So under 241, I think, is probably the best play. A Lakers team total under. Couldn't talk anybody off that look. What is that team total under for the Lakers? Real quick. Let me double, let me check that real quick. Um, this hot, this this is legit me handicapping the game out loud. I hope you guys are enjoying this uh and, and find it helpful. Um 122 and a half you can get for the Lakers team total under. Minus 115 on bet 365 right now is the best number. There's some 121s out there as well. Uh, but not too much juice. Minus one. I think I'm I might get there, man. I hate playing playing against my Lakers, but. Under 122 and a half, uh, 122 and a half points is a lot of points to score. Um, I think Pacers, like I said, five and six and one to the under uh, on opponents' team totals under. I think it's an under spot, man. I really, really do. <laughs> I really, really do. I like the under a lot. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to get there with the under, honestly. Let's see. Uh, Still Salute says cash on all teams, uh, cash on all teams except one team total over. Uh, Thomas says, don't know about this game. My best uh, lean is a uh, Golden State plus the two and a half. 
What's up, she appreciate you for being here. Tasha says, Where is Ski when we need him for uh for his boys? <laughs> yeah, I might DM Ski and see what he like uh in his paces and Lakers game as well. Um, she says YouTube just rob just robbed you for like for a like, bro. <laughs> That's cool. I don't care. I, don't, I never care about likes, man. Tasha says, Yeah, it should be 222 likes. Uh, Tasha says, hit the like button. Uh, he said, she says, hit thumbs up for NBA gambling. Chris fans, appreciate that, Tasha. Uh, I don't think about you guys as fans, though. It's this is a community. Uh, we all trying to cash together. Uh, definitely not fans. Uh, you might be fan of the work, but like I don't put myself on a pedestal like that. Uh, appreciate my guy Eric for tapping in. Tasha says, 122 and a half sounds good. Under, I agree, Tasha. I do agree. Uh, and, uh Andre says, when do you post your picks for the members? I just signed up for the membership. And Jeff's action for the top looks. So let's get into a recap real quick for today. And uh, Andre, I do post the looks as soon as I play them. As soon as I put money on them, I send them out to the members. If you guys are interested, membership link is in the description on the chat. Make sure you guys sign up for it's two memberships. One is like a support tier. I think it's like three ninety nine, and then the other one I think is like five ninety nine. Make sure you get the members as a as a, a crispy cap and community. Um, you know, uh, at the at that tier. So make sure you guys are signing up for that membership. Uh, let's see. Renisha, real quick, before we get into the recap, she says, this is most definitely a bad spot for the Thunder team. Uh, each team who play the Raptors then play another game <laughs> away uh, loss. Look it up. I should have uh, seen that with the Kings. I forgot because it was the, because of the Wizards. And then Alexander says, last night I was leaning game total over in Lakers money line, liking it even more knowing a lot of people on the under in the Pacers. D'Lo and Halliburton uh, might go at it uh, at it uh, on the three game. We'll see. So uh, contrarian, Alexander says he's going to be contrarian and take the over in the Lakers. I'm thinking I'm going to stay off the side, but I do like the under. I, I really do like the under. Um, like I said, Lakers aren't playing with pace either. I just gave you guys the numbers. It was a long breakdown, but if you're interested, go back and listen to it over the last two weeks. All right, so let's get back into it. So real quick on the recap. And I, I didn't put anything on the on the actual um, on the presentation here as far as like top looks, but we, we'll get into them. And all you guys see is considering because I haven't made a bet yet. But what I am looking at, and it's a thousand people watching live right now. Real quick, what I am looking at based on what we have on the board, going back to the first game, um, we probably yeah, it's still early, so we haven't got news yet. The the big news in the Pelicans in Detroit game for myself is you I I think I think uh Jaden Duran Jalen Duran Jalen Duran is definitely needed before you make a play in that game. If they don't if he doesn't play, I think that's so bad for Detroit for, for the Pelicans, and they could potentially get really get smoked. That Pelicans first half probably looks a little bit better, even though Detroit got this weird way of coming out in the first quarter and playing like their best basketball. But it's Detroit and not, I'm sorry, it's it's New Orleans and nothing for me in that game. I uh, probably won't get there in later 12. I also consider Detroit team total under. Um, and, and the thing I'll say about that is this. Detroit team total was at 100 and a half. If Jalen Duran doesn't play, one of the best things that Detroit does is offensive rebound the basketball. They won't be able to, to get easy second chance points when you just got Wiseman and nobody to back them up. Remember, Isaiah Stewart's done for the rest of the season. So is our Sir Thompson. So you really, really thin if you're if you're the Detroit Pistons in this spot. So Detroit team total under if Jalen Duran doesn't play. I think it's absolutely in play. Um, Philly and the Clippers is only plus 10 for me. Only plus 10 for Philly. I haven't gotten there quite yet. I do see the totals going up. And I did tell you guys, I, I think the over is in play. Maybe even a first half over because the Clippers, for whatever reason, tend to play a little bit better defense in the second half. Philly is the worst offensive rated team, even worse than Charlotte <laughs> over the last two games, uh, over the last two weeks. So I still would lean Philly. I think it's a tad bit too many points. The Clippers haven't beaten anybody. I told you guys that. So Clippers, uh, I'm sorry. So so Philly plus ten in the in the second game. Uh, Norman Powell is still listed as questionable. So is PJ Tucker and Daniel Tice. So want to wait on the, that news. That's an early matinee game as well. Uh, Cleveland and Miami. I would only be able to look towards Miami uh, laying the four, but it's not a not a great spot for them. They do got Bam and Jimmy though, and Cleveland is still going to be shorthanded, but they could get Evan Mobley back. And I gave you guys really really strong reasons why I like the under in that spot. Uh, under 203 would be my recommendation on the total. Go to State of Minnesota. That's a game I'm probably going to just stay off, stay off altogether. Uh, definitely want to see what's going to happen with Rudy Gobert, but I'll probably stay off and just watch that one. Maybe a live betting spot. OKC and Milwaukee. I know you guys like the Bucks, man. I like OKC. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get there, 
but I like OKC. I like the over more than either. So I probably will get there. I see the total going up to 232 and a half. We probably should have pounced on that before the show started at 231. Um, but I like the over a little bit more. OKC, Milwaukee over, maybe even a first half over, uh, just in case pace slows down a little bit in the second half. But I'll let you guys know. I'll send it out to the members. And in Indiana and um, in L.A., I do like the under 241. You can get a 241 and a half out there as well. Definitely shop around for the best number. Uh, don't want to lay the points with the Lakers, even though the pay, cause, because just because the Pacers have been top four on both sides of the ball over the last two weeks. So strong, strong lean towards um, that Lakers team total under 122 and a half. And I'm probably going to end up getting there with that. But that game starts at 10 10. Uh, if the late if LeBron James is ruled in, this total might go up even more because uh, I do expect him to play in this spot. So uh, those will be the top looks, man. I'll chop the video up uh, back on again in about an hour and a half with my guy, Jay Money. And uh and LJ uh H Town, LJ from H Town. So we'll get into the we'll get into the games. I'll have some final decisions made by then as well. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys for tapping in as always. Y'all hit the like button for me if you can. An hour and 12 minutes deep diving into the game. If you've never, you know, handicapped the basketball game, today might be a good day to you know go back and watch if you really want to learn how to do so. Cause I give you guys a lot of game, a lot of ways that I'm looking at the games as well. Best of luck to everybody that's in the comment section on all your game or all the action that you guys have. Uh, and I'll be back either late tonight or tomorrow to, to get into the games for tomorrow, uh, the Monday, the Monday slate as well. Best of luck on all your action. Y'all bet responsibly, of course. Uh, hit the like button on your way out if you found the show helpful. Here are resources that I use to handicap the game. And um, yeah, that's it, man. I'm out. Bet responsibly. Enjoy your Sundays as well, man. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out.